One of the most common questions I get asked from beginner climbers has nothing to do with technique or strength. They ask Jennifer, how do I climb in front of other people without getting anxious? Coming from someone who used to feel intense shyness and embarrassment while climbing in front of other people, I'm going to share with you some tips that I learned that'll help you climb confidently in front of others in no time. Sometime. While I know my fears and my anxieties pretty well, I don't want to project them onto you. And so since everyone's experience is kind of different, I hopefully will cover a couple of different tips in this video that will benefit different people. If you're curious to see what we're going to be covering in this video, I always leave timestamps in the description so that you can check those out and watch only what is applicable to you. When I talk about bouldering fear and anxiety, what am I talking about? I'm not talking about, you know, the fear of falling or the fear of hurting yourself. In this video, I'm going to be talking about specifically the anxiety and the embarrassment that you feel when you're climbing in front of other people, especially stronger people. There's the fear of looking weak or making mistakes. You want to climb on something, you have a specific problem that you want to work, but you just can't bring yourself to work on it because you don't want other people to watch you. And I call this an anxiety because we might know in our analytical minds that this is not a rational thing to think, but we still think it anyway. And one of the most common responses on my most popular video is acknowledging how accepting the climbing community is, even the strongest, most, you know, experienced people. And yet, despite the fact that this is a well-known thing about the climbing community, still a bunch of people get anxious about climbing in front of others. Before I was comfortable climbing in front of other people, what I did was go to my university's wall and just climb up and down the V-Zeros because no one would ever go to that gym area. It was more like a storage area in my university's gym. It was never reset. The problems were awful, but at least I felt comfortable climbing in an environment where literally no one was there. Finally, when I got a membership at my bouldering gym, what I would do is go at the crack of dawn, seven in the morning, and I would climb just as my gym had opened. No one climbs at my gym at seven in the morning. Even if people were climbing there, I would frantically, you know, scuttle over to the areas where no one was climbing because even then I could not bear to have someone, just one person watching me climb. It was too embarrassing. And even when I started going to the gym with my friends in the afternoon, I would still not climb on any of the newer sets that people were getting really excited about. I was relegating myself to the really old chalked up climbs that everyone had already kind of had their turn on. And that's, that's no way to live. I think the biggest issue behind bouldering anxiety is the fear of making mistakes and having people see that you're making mistakes. So the first thing I want to address is adopting a growth mindset and learning to accept the mistakes as part of the process. This is kind of a big topic and it's not something that you are just gonna flip the switch and suddenly be cool with. Adopting a different mindset than the one you have currently is something that takes a lot of practice and a lot of time. It's like if you're freaking out and someone just tells you, don't oh, relax. It, it doesn't work like that. I actually found this really cool infographic on Instagram that I think does a pretty good job at explaining it. And I'll post it over here so that you can like maybe take a screenshot for yourself and reference it whenever you are getting down on yourself at the gym. Someone who's afraid of making mistakes and wanting to appear like they're already extremely talented and skilled at something will avoid challenges because if you fail, it means that you're not talented or you give up easily. You see effort as bad because you know, if you're good at something, it should be easy. Whereas someone who has a healthy growth mindset will seek out challenges and see mistakes as essential as part of the process. They see mistakes as an exciting thing where it presents an opportunity for growth, for improvement. What I did was whenever I was a little bit discouraged at the gym, maybe feeling a little silly for making too many sloppy mistakes, what I would do is gradually shift my thoughts and be mindful of the way that I was talking to myself in my head. If you notice that you are saying things to yourself that are kind of mean, like you're so sloppy, your technique is horrible, once you hear yourself telling yourself these thoughts, just in your head say stop and replace it with something more productive. Maybe something that 
this infographic inspires you with. Gradually, by adjusting the way that you talk to yourself, you'll be able to overcome those limiting beliefs that you have set for yourself. Definitely be aware of the language that you're using when you're talking to yourself in your noggin. A really good example of this that I found recently is actually one of Oswaldo slash Rock Entry's videos. He posted a vlog where he went to Palm Springs Aerial Tramway with his buddy John, who's ridiculously strong. Oswaldo's strong, but John is kind of like on another level strong. And Oswaldo's showing John his project. He's saying how stoked he is. You know, it's like this V7 looks really freaking tough, in my opinion. Oswaldo tries it. He falls off what I assume is the crux move and is like, oh, well, next time. And John's like, do you mind if I have a go at it? In a British accent, of course, which I am not gonna do. Oswaldo's like, yeah, sure. John proceeds to flash his project. And instead of making this a weird thing, Oswaldo is stoked for John. Instead of getting dejected or disappointed, even jealous maybe, that his friend was able to flash his project, he was super stoked for John and even asked John to give him pointers. So being able to be okay with your mistakes and making them in front of other people is an incredibly healthy mindset to have. And because he was so willing to embrace his mistakes and show them in front of John, he was able to get a lot farther in the climb because John was able to help him get past those mistakes that he was making. The next thing I wanna talk about is having a support system. Climbing is a lot less scary if it's an experience you share with others. And even if you are an introvert, like I am, it's actually really easy to find friends and people to climb with. For example, your gym probably puts on a lot of climbing events. Your gym probably has some groups that meet up regularly and your gym probably has people that you can um, just go up and start chatting with. And your internet probably has forums of people who are chatting up within your area. In climbing, it's just a really good practice to be friendly. Let's bring this back to anxiety climbing in front of other people. Let's say you're projecting a V2 and there is a group of people next to you who is projecting a V8 that kind of intersects with your V2. Something that might ameliorate your anxiety is if you talk to these people. And I don't mean you just sit next to them and insert yourself into their conversations and start talking with them. It's as easy as, say, one of them falls off a really strong attempt on that V8. All you have to do is say, hey, that was a really good shot, or that looked super strong. If you work up the courage to say that, they might be really appreciative of that and they might show you some support in return. Worst case scenario and they ignore you, which I don't think would ever happen, at least you put yourself out there and presented yourself as a warm, friendly person. So that when you do eventually climb on that V2, people know that you're a kind, awesome person and will be less likely to be annoyed at you for taking up the wall or whatever, which doesn't even happen in the first place. So there's that. As much as it's cool to shift your mindset make friends, you still have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations in order to get over your anxiety and your fear. This is the part where I talk about exposure and desensitization. Let's just roll with the last example that I presented. You're eyeing a V2 project while people are projecting a V8 right next to you. What you should do is just stand up and look intently at your climb. This is sending a non-verbal cue to people around you that you have an intention to climb something. It's very important, people cannot read your mind. Just inch closer and closer to the wall, making sure to not be in anyone's fall zones or in anyone's personal space. When the time comes and your problem has freed up, just walk up to it and then try and clear your mind as best as possible. This is way easier said than done, but something that I found that helped me out is just hyper-focusing on something else. And this can be anything. Focus on your breath, focus on your body position, focus on the feeling of the holds, the color of the holds. Anything to get your mind off of what other people might be thinking of you. Get up to the wall and then just start climbing. With every very intentional, deliberate move, maybe exhale a little bit. If I'm climbing and I'm anxious, you'll know because if you listen hard enough, you'll hear a little like, so that's something interesting that you can try out. Let's just say that you fall. What I want you to do is just walk back to where you were standing before with a smile in your face. There is nothing worse than someone who falls from their climb and has a temper tantrum, which I've seen before. 
which I know you're not gonna do. In any case, you should be walking with a big smile on your face, signifying to others that all is good and we're all happy. Even if you feel like crap, smiling does that thing where it tricks your mind into thinking you're happy. That I don't really know if that works for me, but hey, if the psychologists are saying it, maybe it's worth a shot. Those are pretty much my only main tips, but I did want to add a little addendum because when I was researching things to put in this video, I was also reading this book called Brave Not Perfect by Reshma Sarjani. She is the founder of Girls Who Code and she has this pretty famous TED talk where she talks about how boys are raised to be brave and girls are raised to be perfect. And I don't really want to get into the gender politics of this because if you are a perfectionist, you will benefit from reading her book, watching her TED talk. But as someone who is a female and who is a perfectionist, it really hit home for me. If you feel like throughout your life you've internalized this pressure to be perfect, it has probably hindered your progress in some aspects of your life. If you do feel like that is the case for you, I would definitely recommend starting out with watching her TED talk because the book is just kind of like a drawn out version of that talk. And in the book, at least, she goes into more of the growth mindset mentality strategies, learning how to overcome the pressure to be perfect. I'll leave links to the talk and the book in the description below. And if you've made it this far, congrats, because you've just made the ends of Jen's ends. Guys, I'm so sweaty right now. As always, I want to say how incredibly appreciative I am to each and every one of you. I love you all so, so much. I did reference my last video in this video, which I'll link over here. I'll insert like a mystery video or playlist over here. I don't know what it's gonna be yet, but that's all very exciting. So please watch those. I will be so, so happy if you do. And until then, I'll just see you in the next one. All right, bye guys.